Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Pamela Martin, the editor of King Richard and an Oscar nominee this year in the best editing category. Congratulations, Pamela, on the nomination. What was what was it like when you found out that you were nominated uh, for a second time? Obviously, you were nominated previously for The Fighter. So, yeah. Oh, it's, it's an incredible feeling. I mean, you work so hard and, you, you know, I love this film so, so much. And it was such a great experience working on it. It's just, you know, it's just icing on the cake. I'm so grateful and, and really honored to be uh, nominated. Yeah, I, I love the film too. I think it's so great. It, it works so well. You've obviously, you know, you've done sports movies before, or like movies that have sports elements, obviously The Fighter we mentioned and Battle of the Sexes. Doing King Richard here, I think the way you handle the tennis scenes is so incredible and it feels like very realistic, honestly. And I know people who are fans of tennis, I've talked to or have commented on like how well it works on that aspect of it, I guess. So like, how did you approach this and uh, from the the sports aspect of it, I guess, and did, how did it, your approach maybe change or how did the past experiences on Battle of the Sexes, let's say, like inform or, you know, change how you wanted to approach this? Yeah, I mean, there. look, I learned on, on my first sports movie that you really have to um, know what story you're telling in every match, right? So that's important. Uh, in terms of Battle of the Sexes and this one, they're, they're approached in a very, very different way because they're telling different stories. Uh, and, you know, Battle of the Sexes was about a kind of a, a media circus surrounding this particular tennis match. So it was very, that was shot in um, a, the classic tennis television format, right? High angles, you know, et cetera, uh, wide on the court, except for when you go back, you know, in after, before or after points you never cross the line, for example, you don't cross the other side of the court. This was, and, and the tennis styles are quite different. That was um, then, and this is power tennis, you know, the style of tennis is very di a very different pace. Um, King Richard was, you know, the tennis is serving the story of the family, of, of the arc of, you know, the prequel to, you know, it's the origin story of Venus and Serena as we know them. And they did not want to shoot in an observational uh, language. They wanted to be down low on the court. We did do a couple of previs shoots at various yeah. points before production and before um, uh, uh, when we went back into production again to get that language right. They, they experimented with a lot of different angles um, down low on the court. Uh, you see we dolly side to side and, and, what, and they, we do cross the line. We go to the other side of the net and play back and forth sometimes. And it's, we figured out which angles were working and which weren't before going into production. And what's so wonderful and visceral about how it works in, with power tennis is when a ball comes, you know, someone misses a shot, it, it, it comes screaming by the camera, right? So it's so exciting and there's movement and it's just a more kinetic, um, at, which serves that style of tennis and serves the story that we were telling. So they are approached very differently. Also, we don't have sports commentators because they were not live televised events. There was no existing commentators uh, that we could go to and we didn't want to make it up. So we had to rely on music, sound, and just cutting for the action and cutting for the arc in, in the drama in those scenes without uh, that tool. It's amazing you say that too, because it's like, you don't even, I, as a viewer, you're not even picking up on that, that it's so common for obviously sports movies and tennis or any of them to use an announcer to like kind of walk the audience through it. This film doesn't have that. And the way you, you're editing it and the way it's shot and everything, you're just so, it's so easy for the audience to, kind of follow along. I, I just found that really, I, I love that, that touch. I thought that was, that was really cool. The other thing you do, you, and not, I mean, spoiling, I guess, at the end of the film, but like the, uh, the, the final match with, with uh, Rancho Sanchez Vicario, you have that great moment where she walks off the court and the tension that's built in that bathroom break is just so incredible. And I guess, can you talk about like how you guys worked on that and like making sure it was, I, I don't remember how long it is in, in real life. I guess it was like seven or eight minutes, right? But it's not like that long in the film, but it feels so long without like dragging and it's just, you're building the tension so well. I guess, can you talk a little about that sequence? Yeah. Cause I just love that so much. Yeah, yeah, that's such a great moment. I mean, you know, it took a lot of passes in the editing to get that 
part of it right in terms of the length um you know we in the initial pass it obviously was much longer i never played it out eight or nine minutes it was maybe you know three minutes i don't know what it is in the final film anymore but um we did uh what also really helped that that section was late you know we shot that whole scene during the pandemic we did not have crowds in the stadium and so later on um when we were getting closer to a final version of the film we went and did some pickups and we got some shots of real people in the crowds including looking at their watch getting up to go get some popcorn or take a bathroom break and you see the restlessness in the crowd so th that those elements came in later and th those were very important um yeah you know you just, just like like the whole scene has to be calibrated just right and you have to feel the tension but you, you don't want to linger in it too long or you know you just discover that by repeatedly screening it and and feeling feeling it out yeah it's it's great sequence i just think it's so great thank uh, you I, <laughs> um i know you had uh, you would i think you had met ronaldo marcus green i guess i know you were at the sundance lab together right or, yes. or in, and and i know uh so i guess like how did your like how did you go from there, like to being like, yes, I think, you know, this is obviously a big film for him. I've, I've spoken to him about it too. And like, I know it like, he we spoke very highly of working with you, but I guess, how did you kind of like come into your relationship with, with Ronaldo and like, kind of yeah, like, I think mean, that he could pull this off, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, you work with a younger filmmaker, it's, you're taking a leap for sure. And so we, when we started talking about King Richard, it was probably about five months before principal photography. And I, because I had cut sports before, particularly tennis, I was asking him a lot of very specific questions about how are you going to do this? How are you going to do this? And I, I think that was good because, you know, it got him maybe, you know, thinking more about some of the things that I knew that I would, that, you know, as someone with some experience with it, we're concerned about, and also being able to advise him, like, whatever you do, you know, yes, you're going to choreograph stuff, you're going to do this, but just shoot a lot of free play also, because that becomes, that is so important in any sport movie to have those extra points and the extra stuff that you can go to. Um, and I definitely was a little reticent about doing another tennis film. It's so much work. It's <laughs> really hard to do. Um, but I, I loved Monsters and Men, his first film. It was so beautiful. I hadn't seen his second film yet because it wasn't finished. It wasn't out yet. Uh, but I really liked Ray and I liked his sensibility. And he and in the time between when we first met and when he asked me to do it, when it was a go and he was allowed to hire someone, uh, I had had I had time to read many scripts in that time period. And it was by far the best script. Zach wrote Zach Balin wrote a great script. And so I just thought, oh, I'm just, you know, the idea was a little exhausting to me to kind of all right, here we go with the tennis again, you know, but but I just love the story so much. And, you know, look, any of these sports movies that I've done, they're not sports movies. Yes, they have sports in them, but they're not really sports movies. They're about the people. And and I just thought this was an incredible story. And and just as someone who has always liked tennis and who always liked watching Venus and Serena play tennis, I didn't know much about Richard Williams except for how he was portrayed in the media, which was like, oh, that crazy tennis dad, he's a little nuts. The guy was, a, the, you know, what gripped me in that script from the get-go was he wrote the 78 page plan before they were born. I mean, that's incredible. And that was such a hook for me that I just could not get that out of my head. Like he made this come true. And I, I'm, I know this sounds a little, maybe a little wacko, but I'm very much a believer in like self-fulfilling prophecies. Like I think, you know, career-wise, like I've always believed and known that I would do what I'm doing and, and not, obviously not that I would get nominated and things like that, but that, that I was just going to do this and nobody was going to stop me. And I feel like Richard has that, had that, you know, and has that. And, and it's incredible what the family did. And I also knew nothing about Oracine, the mother, and what an important role she played. I didn't know about the three other three sisters. 
who did become doctors and lawyers and everything Richard planned. So I, I was just kind of, when I read other scripts, I just, I could not stop thinking about this one. And so I decided, well, this is worth, this is worth trying. And, and, and Ray Green was the nicest, most creative, generous person to work with. It was, I've been doing this a really long time and this was by far the best job I've ever had. Wow, that's it incredible. Just, it was like the people, every single person involved was so generous with their time and kind and the, the studio was great and supportive and I never felt like I didn't have the tools I needed to do my job. Like, it, like it was just kind of, I, the only thing, you know, if there had been no pandemic, it would have been better. I would have loved to have had my crew in person for the whole time. Unfortunately, I only had them in person for three weeks and then everyone was remote. But Ray and I did work in person together every day after the shoot, he came in. Um, and that was really important. Yeah, that's incredible. And I, I think you could tell, like I just from people I've talked to and watching the film, the, the sense of uh, camaraderie and the familiar aspect obviously plays out in the, in the film, but from the crew and stuff, you could really feel that. And I wanted to ask you about that too, because like you mentioned before, you're, the sports movies you make are not always, are not really only about sports. And like, you do such a great job, I think in your, the films you've edited, like you're saying, like The Fighter or Little Miss Sunshine or this, obviously you have these great families and you, you're, the, the way the, the family interactions work, it sums up Beverly Hills. I know you did like, that's another one that I was thinking of watching this where mm -hmm. I was like, just you, it, the, it, you could just sense they're all like of the same thing, even though those are all different films by different filmmakers. Yeah. And I think you do a great job of getting that. Obviously the cast is this has been so acclaimed and it's nominated for, we're recording this on Thursday, I guess. And the SAG Awards are Sunday. It's nominated for best ensemble. Can you talk a little about how you, what you, how you approach like crafting a family that feels so believably like a family. And I think you do that incredibly well. And, and obviously in this film as well. So I'd love to hear Thank you talk about that because I think there, you have to have some kind of special sauce or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. Yeah, those films, I guess they do all have in common that they are families. They're very, very flawed in many ways, but there's just this love that just comes through that you see how much they all love each other. And for me, in building believable families on screen, has everything to do with, and, and this is really any movie you do. It doesn't even matter if it's about a family or like, you know, if I'm cutting, a, you know, about uh, capturing a, a Nazi fugitive, whatever. <laughs> like, you just have, every moment has to be grounded in reality. And that goes, that really speaks to how you choose performances and that everything has to, feel truthful for that situation. Um, families in particular, like, you know, you mentioned Little Miss Sunshine, like there's that fabulous, you know, the, the very opening of the film is that long scene around the dinner table. And that's very similar to, you know, being in the van with eight people or, you know, with five kids and a dad and, and this movie is that the, or let's say in the fighter, the, the seven sisters sitting down with, with Mickey and his girlfriend and mom and dad in the living room. You know, when you have an ensemble, there's a editorially, it's messy. Families are messy. They talk over each other. It's a beautiful thing. And so you just have to, you know, editorially weave different reactions together, get everybody in the game because everybody's got their own personality and bring something unique to each family. So if I were, you know, in a larger sense, there's there's that too of like, those scenes are really fun to cut because you have a lot of material and a lot of fun stuff to work with. It's not necessarily who's talking, but how people are reacting. And I think it just brings those families alive in a very real way. Yeah, and I think you, it does. I, I totally agree. And I think you, it does, it's really fun to watch too as a viewer. I, I just a little, narrowing down a little more specifically too for, the individual performance, obviously, Will Smith nominated for an Oscar. Anjane Ellis is nominated for an Oscar. Uh, they have the incredible scenes together. I know you've I know you've talked about their the scene in the kitchen is like a high point, certainly for Anjane uh, and also Will. I think in that scene is so great. Yeah. Um, I get, I, you know, maybe using that scene as like a as a jumping off point or just in general when you're 
working with these kind of incredible, they're great performances. I mean, is that like something you're just like aware of immediately? Like you could just know that this is like something special that you're getting to work with or like, how, how does, how do you, how do you kind of approach that when you have like this, these, this really great, I mean, I don't want to call it raw material, but obviously it's so good. Like it must be like. Yeah. Like, I mean, look, it's like, wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. You, you, when you get to cut great actors, I mean, obviously it makes my job so much easier. Right. Um, and then, you know, some actors need a little more help, but, but you find the, the good pieces, you find the truth. I mean, that's, that's, that's my job. Um, Will Smith is fantastic. Anjanu is fantastic. The girls, and honestly, you know, our Venus and Serena, uh, you know, Sanaya and uh, Demi are fantastic, but the, the other three sisters, I was so in love with them, uh, particularly the one who, who plays Lynn. I forget, I'm Lindrea, I forget her, her name, her, her real name, but like all of those girls had these great little person, their own personalities. And I think that also speaks to the fact that we had Isha Price, the real Isha Price, the one of the older sisters as an executive producer on set every day. So all these girls got to, not only did they get to meet you know, Venus and Serena and Isha in person, but, and I, and actually another one, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, forgetting her name. One of the other sisters was a co uh, working in the costume department, I want to say. So, so they got to really get to know the family and, and talk to Isha about the personalities of each of the, the girls. And so they just play so well as an ensemble and they there's so much energy and light and love in, in those performances. So they were really fun to cut. And John Bernthal, I had a ball with him. I mean, it's a John Bernthal we've never seen, <laughs> at least I hadn't seen before. And that was really fun to cut. Tony Goldwyn, I actually had edited him before many, many, many years ago. Um, he's always solid. And, you know, it was just fun. It was just fun. The performances were you know, everybody had something special and, you know, it's just my job to just sort of help them, you know, show the best of that and take out the fat, right? And um, and to concentrate on crafting the story. Luckily, I didn't have to do any triage in performances <laughs> on this film, which, you know, it does happen. Right. That was, I was looking up to, uh, Lindre is Layla Crawford is the young actress. I believe. Yes, she's, she's playing, fantastic. Playing I mean, I love them all. I yeah. love them all. My Kayla and I forget the other... Um, Danielle, right? Yeah. Danielle or Daniela. Uh, they're all incredible um, yeah. and really brought so much to the to to their roles. Right. And I know we have to wrap up here. Last one. I know uh, this week. I know the Oscars made a, a somewhat controversial decision about the uh, the broadcast, where categories are going to be asked, uh, you know, announced before the show, but not in the pre-show. I, I know you're obviously aware of this. Yeah. I guess as someone who is nominated in one of those categories, I know I saw the American Cinema Editors uh, Board of Directors kind of announced it. I guess, what are your thoughts on it? If you don't feel, you don't have to answer if you don't feel comfortable with it, but I, I as a nominee, I'm sure you, you have some thoughts on it, but I, I'd love to know. I mean, does it like take away from the nomination at all? Probably not, but like, I mean, I don't know. It's not necessarily what you want. I'd love to hear your Look, it doesn't it, take away from the nominations. I mean, that's a, it's a, it's an incredible honor. It doesn't take away from all the hard work. It doesn't take away from the fact that I feel incredibly appreciated by my fellow filmmakers and the people I made the movie with. And so that's a beautiful thing. Unfortunately, the way it was done is not, it doesn't make you feel, you know, it's a little disheartening. Um, I, you know, they presented in a way that, 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 oh, you know, it's the gonna be, the way it's gonna play on the show is this, it's the same experience for everybody. It's the same experience for everyone. If it was the same experience for everybody, they wouldn't have chosen those categories. They would have pulled them randomly out of a hat. So uh, it's a little, I think, you know, in, in, in pursuit of higher ratings for a television show, it's a little misguided because people who watch the Oscars, loyalists, they're gonna lose some of them because of this. I know, you know, people that I know who are in the Academy have emailed me and said, I'm not watching this year, I'm pissed, you know, or film fans, right? I don't think they're gonna gain more viewers 
by doing this, like people who don't watch the Oscars, they're not interested in this sort of thing, right? <laughs> so, um, so it's a little, it's a little disappointing. And, and the fact that they're spending more screen time on Twitter voted uh, best awards and stuff is really at the expense of sh the production designers or the editors or the short films being uh, in the live show in, in the way that we're accustomed to is disappointing as well. Um, look, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna have a really fun night no matter how they do it. I think it'll be a little weird if your fellow filmmakers are on the red carpet. You know, there's a, always this, you know, the condescending term of below the line is even more accentuated in this case. Not all, fortunately, not all of the, those categories are relegated to the pre-show, but it's going to be quite weird for, for people who win Oscars to get up and give thank, thank you speeches to their directors or actors or whoever they were connected with on the film, but they're out on the red carpet. Mm -hmm. I think that's a little weird. So hopefully they'll figure that out. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's a great, like I said, it's a great honor and, and I hope they figure out a way. There's a lot of, I think there's a lot of hurt feelings um, by a lot of people who have been kind of, you know, who, who, whatever, yeah. or her, her by the decision. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And, and thank you so much for, you know, that, I, that, that was, that's a very eloquent way to talk about it, I think. And I definitely agree with you. I think it's uh, definitely seems like they could have handled it a little better, but uh, we end on a high note. It's a great film, Pamela Martin. And uh, thank you. It's so, so great. And congratulations on the nomination again uh, in Best Editing. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much. This. Thank you. All right, have a good day.